Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be installing this. So this is the Revo air intake package um, for the Mark 7 ST. It does come with a bunch of fitting instructions, as you can see here. Um, but it doesn't say to remove the headlights um, or the window wipers or the cowl that goes with window wipers, none of that. So apparently, well according to the instructions anyway, you should be able to do it without removing any of that. So I'm going to have a little play around. Um, I'm going to roll a montage now just quickly of me basically disassembling all the stock parts. Um, there are other videos on my channel that obviously show you how to do that. And then we'll go a little bit more into depth of how to actually install this Revo air intake. So let's start with the video. Basically what I've done so far is I've removed the hose clamp here, the little clip here, hose clamp back here. I'm going to now remove those. Um, I'm going to need to take the math sensor out, I think. And then I probably need to take these off as well. There's a bunch of different little things that you need to do, but we'll get it done. So this is the hard bit, is getting oh, the stock intake off because it's in some rubber grommets down below. I mean, it's proper in there. Oh, jeez. I'm going to get my hand as far down as possible to give myself Huh. Okay. I guess we're not having my... Uh... <laughs> I mean, that just fully exploded. Just clear up this mess. Guess we're not having uh, my bonnet thing anymore, which I don't need anyway, so who cares? Either way, that's out. <laughs> so that's good. Right, ignoring that, the intake's now out. Obviously the mass sensor's still in the other thing. I've still got the rubber grommets over here. Okay, so I guess we don't need this anymore. Thing that I just broke the thing that holds it on. Okay, so we're now going to remove these two nuts here. basically all out we need to take our Revo intake pipe so this is the basically the crossover um, we're going to use the silicon reducer hose a 70 mil to 90 mil clamp and we're going to clamp that down and now on this side we're going to take their their long silicon tube also known as the wobbly bit um, and that's basically going to add as your new breather pipe so it's going to go to kind of where your old breather pipe used to go and obviously as you can see it's going to kind of sit in the engine like this 
and this pipe is going to reach around and clog it into there. Um, so anyway, we're probably going to install this first, but that's the kind of setup you need to get that prepared um, and then you're kind of ready to go with that. So we're going to install this section first. I've put now a 60 to 80 millimeter hose clamp onto here. Um, and we're basically going to feed this down and into uh, the engine bay. Okay, this, this is the best way. So use the massive hole that you've got over here. Slide it in and underneath. Oh, it's a very tight squeeze, but it's in. So hopefully you can see kind of what I've done so far. So obviously we've got the pipe here. That's going to basically go around onto there. I've just put it onto there to basically hold it into position just while I mess around with the turbo end. So the turbo end's down inside of here. And obviously this is going to be quite hard to see, but I'm literally just going to feed it over the elbow, tighten up the hose clamp and try and make sure obviously this is in the correct place. Now this whole thing I think needs to come forwards a lot. So I'm just going to mess around with that now. Okay, so this next bit, we're going to basically install this bracket onto this nut. Uh, so you've got this bracket here, and you've got an M8 screw, an M8 washer, and an M8 nylon nut. So you've got this bracket here, which is kind of like a weird shaped one. It's something I've noticed that I'm looking at this more and more and more, the quality of these products is insane. So props to them for doing that. But anyway, it's going to get installed that way around. Okay, so what you're going to do is basically the bracket's going to go this way around. Obviously this bolt only fits through one of the holes. So it's going to sit like this, and we're just going to kind of Hold that on there. We're going to pull the crossover towards us just a little bit. Mount the bolt through there. And then you're going to get your nut. And thread it onto the back. And now what we're going to do is basically tighten this so it sits slightly closer to us here. So it's going to sit like this. Okay, so we're now going to tighten this bracket, so I've tightened this side. Um, I now just need a 13mm and a little one. And we're just going to tighten this bolt at the back here. Obviously we don't want to over tighten anything, it's only to support it at the end of the day. It's not kind of a structural part, shall we say. But I'm just going to tighten it to the point where it gets to the nylock. And we're now going to move on to the next section. So that is the crossover installed. So the both hose clamps on the intake elbow are tight. We've got our bracket here, nice and seated. The crossover itself is really, really nice and tight. Obviously we've got this pipe over here. Um, so I'm not sure 100% the best way to route this one at the minute. Um, but for now I'm just going to leave them both loose because um, obviously I need to work out how this one goes in, how the box goes in and everything like that. So next thing we're going to do is install basically where the heat shield goes and the silicon joiner that goes in between those. Okay, so it comes supplied with this bracket here. Um, now all you need to do is basically undo this nut, find this bracket, put it all back together, washer each side, and you're all good to go. Then we're going to put a hose clamp, so we're going to have to undo the hose clamp, we're going to put a hose clamp through this bracket. So that's the next thing that we're going to do. I now have seen how to do it. So the way you do it, there is a Torx bolt here. So this one here, not this low down one, this one here. You undo this, and that is where your bracket is going to sit. Now obviously if we get our bracket, which is, I had it a second ago. So we're gonna get our bracket, slide it into here like so, and then you're gonna use one of the supplied bolts. So this is a little black. Um, M8, I think it might be an M6. I think it's an M6 actually. I'm just going to pop it through this hole into the hole that you remove the Torx bit from. And then we're going to tighten that up like crazy. So once that's tight, obviously I haven't tightened it fully just yet. I'm going to put this silicon hose on. We 
which is a bloody tight fit. Oh, okay. Right. So the silicon hose is on, now I'm going to feed the hose clamp around the whole lot of it, that way I'm not kind of messing around with, with anything. Then we're going to do the hose clamp up, like so. As you can see, that holds it perfectly into position. So that's where you want the hose clamp done up. Obviously, I might drop it around a bit more, and I need to do up that bolt at the back, which I probably should have done first. But I can still get in there with the spanner. I'm just going to do that up nice and tight. A few hugger duggers and we're good to go. So that is that hose fully in and now it's solid, it's not moving anywhere. So now I'm just going to pop this into here now. The long end is going to go inside, the short end out, and you're going to basically have it hanging out by about two or three mil. Um, the reason for that is basically this OEM connector clips onto that. So we're then going to get this around the outside, we're going to tighten this. So there, like before, I'll push it down a bit so you can see that there's like a small little ridge just there. And then this will allow you to hopefully slide that onto there. Now obviously if I've gone too little or too much, it won't clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo this a little bit. basically just slide it out a tiny bit then try it for a that's perfect there so what I'm now going to do is tighten this while it's in situ now I should be able to undo it and that will slide off nicely slide back on clip into place and we're all good to go so that is now clipped on perfectly so the next thing we're going to work on is this hose here and just work out kind of the route that we want it to take. Do I want to go under this wire? Do I want to go over this wire? I'm going to say over it. See, I need a hose clamp on the end. So this should be, I think, your second to last hose clamp that you've got. That's going to slide over the end like that. Uh, let's have it this way around. That's then going to slide onto here, and then we're going to do up this hose clamp. Once again, just do it up so it's nice and tight. That feels perfect. So that's how that hose is going to sit. So now that's your breather pipe to your crank case. I think there's a crank case um, all fitted. See so everything else is nice and tight. So now all we have to do is the heat shield over here and kind of put the air cone in, which is awesome. Okay, so this is the fun part. This is the part where we install the Revo heat shield, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Um, you've got two holes in the bottom. Um, hopefully you can see them just down there. These plugs are going to sit into these holes. So just like that, as you can see, and then out the back, they're gonna look like this. You're then gonna take two very, very long bolts. And two little washers. And basically what you're going to do is it's going to sit 
into those holes like that. Obviously you've got a little washer in between that, so the washer will go on here. And it's going to sit into this hole like so. Basically, just like that. Now these plugs down here are actually going to go through the rubber grommets at the bottom. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to start to feed this into here. Like so. And just make sure, I know you guys can't see this, but we're going to make sure that basically the rubber things are going to fall into place. So once again, they push through like that. You see we've got our hose comes through here, our other silicon hose which comes through there. Um, just try and find the right place for it and you'll, you'll find that it will just almost slot into place quite nicely actually. Then we're going to do these up. I think these are 7 mils. They are not 7 mils. I'm going to do these up. So two 10 mil bolts. What you're going to do is get your obviously your filter here, as we can see. And we're just going to sli slide our mass sensor in. So obviously the sensor is at the front. We're going to slide that in, nice and tight. And then basically we're going to put some little bolts in here. So you do actually supply you with the little bolts and washers to go into here. And we're just going to make sure they're obviously tightened down nice and evenly. So we're just going to tighten these down. Obviously don't overstress it. I'd like to point out the only reason I'm using a really long extension is so my hand isn't too close to where I'm recording. So they will pretty much max out when you've got it tight. You'll feel it max out. Don't over tighten those, it's not worth it. So your air filter is basically gonna go into here See, we need to get this silicon, this hose clamp on as well. But pretty much, you're just going to start to wiggle it into this silicon hose. Now, obviously, we've got a lot of play here that we can work with. And there's a small ridge on the actual intake itself. like so. I'm just going to undo this a little bit. This should allow me a little bit of room to kind of rotate this intake in here a little bit nicer. Cool, so that intake is now not touching anything. So I've rotated that silicon pipe just a few degrees. Now that's fully in there. Obviously we need to do our hose clamp. So I've now positioned my hose clamp where I need it. Obviously the math sensor plug is going to plug into here. Like so. So that's now in. I'm now going to tighten this one down a little bit. Once again, get it nice and tight, but just so it's holding it on, not so you're breaking anything. I would say that's that done. Now we install this bracket, which is kind of the finishing piece of the puzzle. Okay, so we've now got to install this bracket. Um, so what we want to do is basically feed 
this bolt through like this, which is then going to feed into this side bit. And then we're going to put our nylon on the back. And what we need to basically do is take out this Torx bit. I'm just going to remove this. Once that's removed, we can obviously swing it round. And at this point, this is where you're basically just going to line up this bracket exactly where it needs to be. So once you've got that bracket into the right place, you're just going to screw it in. And then obviously just make sure this bracket here is nice and tight. And then that is the heat shield nice and secure inside your car. It has just started raining. I'm not the happiest man alive. Right. So that's fully in. In theory, it should now start and we're all good to go. Okay, so that is the Revo intake installed. So you've got the bracket here. So you've got the heat shield with the two bolts down there. Hose clamp intake mass sensor. That's your silicon elbow. Remember to leave about three, about three millimeters here just so this can clip on. So play around with that. Obviously then you've got the Revo crossover into the elbow at the back there. Um, and obviously this bracket here, which mounts onto this one here. So overall, in terms of install, quite simple. The bit that I really struggled with was here, and that's just because I swear in my instructions, it does not tell me to remove that Torx bit. And the last thing I wanna be doing is unbolting things from my engine without you know, the knowledge of what the hell that bit even is. Um, but anyway, either way, you undo that Torx bit and there's like a, basically a bracket that holds this um, you do need that bracket on because you need it to basically pull the crossover down and into the position that you need it for your intake as you can see but overall install wise i would probably say it's like a i mean if a sports cat's like an eight or a nine out of ten um this is like a six five six probably this is way harder to install than an itg is and that's only because you've got all of these extra bits to kind of put on so you've got obviously the heat shield to make sure you've got all these different orientations and stuff so it's a little bit harder than a itg crossover and intake kit um, but overall super happy with it the last thing we need to put on now is the engine cover so i'll just get that now so we're going to get our engine cover here just finish this off And that is install complete. So thank you guys for watching. Remember to like this video, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Um, if you guys need any help with this install, I guess this is kind of the first Revo intake install on the internet that I can find anyway. Um, so I'm here to help if you need me. Obviously I got the help of other people that had the kit installed already. It is a bit fiddly, it is a bit complicated. I reckon if you've got two people to work on it, it will go a bit quicker because you can obviously one can hold the bracket while the other one does the hose clips little things like that um, but overall i'm happy with it i'm going to start it up now take it for a test drive um, and i'll kind of give you guys a review a little bit further down the line once i've actually road tested it um, and in terms of noise and everything like that but i'll start it up now give you guys some noises and then i'll leave you guys there